Hi, this is Veronica from Paint My Moment again, and on today's video, I'm going to go over the various art supplies I use when I work on a painting, and I'm going to describe what they're used for and any advice I can give based on my personal experience. So let's go ahead and get started here. Now then, here is an example of the various art supplies I use for painting, and I shall go over them and how they work and the pros and cons of some of them. First off here is my preferred medium to work on. I like using a primed or pre-gessoed cradled art board, which just means it was primed by the manufacturer, but you can prime your own boards or canvas as you wish. It's not, no problem with it. I do have gesso right here, which is what you use to prime your uh, materials, basically board, canvas, illustration, paper, and whatnot. This is what you use to prime it so that you would paint on that. You see that here? Now I prefer uh, the pre-gessoed one because it usually comes in a smoother finish, which kind of works better for my detail work. And this material does not bend or warp or press in like, say, illustration paper or canvas. Although ultimately, what you paint on will be your personal preference, and there's no right or wrong answer with these choices, really. They all have their pros and cons, like these boards in particular are more expensive, while canvas can dent or stretch when you work on it. So it becomes kind of like what you prefer to work with. Now then, I also have here a large graphite stick. This is a 10B softness, so it basically gives off a lot um, of graphite and it goes over a wider area. I use this in my transfer process. I like it because it covers more of the paper faster when I'm using it. But you can also use a uh, 4B pencil or softer. I prefer the 8B or 10B for darker coverage, which means the uh, tracing transfer will show up better when I do so. Again, it is also a matter of preference. It doesn't have to be uh, this material. You can use a regular pencil of a certain softness. Next up here, we have painter's tape. You probably recognize this. This is pretty standard for artists. Your classic blue painter's tape. It comes in different widths and everything. And basically, we use this to either tape down edges or attach the image I'm transferring to the artboard. So that way, you just kind of flip over to and from. And of course, you can use it for other things as well. Naturally, very standard equipment. And uh, your tools of the trade here, your assorted paint brushes. Now, these will vary depending on what medium you use and what style or technique you prefer. Now, I personally have a preference for the uh, synthetic talcon. This is kind of like a golden brown color on these bristles. And they tend to be pretty smooth and they flow well and I just have that kind of preference for them. Although I also like synthetic white sable and some natural hair brushes like Kolinsky, which is, and a few others. The more coarser like horse or boar hair are really good for like uh, texture and such. And at this point it becomes kind of what your preference is. I prefer smaller brushes because I tend to do more detail work and I do have ones much finer than these. And I am usually go more this size for a bigger print. I do have bigger brushes actually but usually I'll stick within like the kind of medium or small range for my brushes. All right. It just kind of depends what you prefer to work with and what kind of style or paintings you do. Now, pencil, just your classic mechanical pencil here. I use this guy to trace over the image to transfer from, you know, the printed image to the artboard, and I will go over that in another video. Uh, the type I have here is a sumo grip. I like it because it's better ergonomics for my hand and fingers here, a little thicker. And well, to be honest, you don't have to use a mechanical pencil. You can even just use a regular yo know, school pen, yellow school pencil if you want to. So long as you get some decent pressure on it, so that way when you're drawing over the image you're transferring, it shows up, which is the main thing I use. So I got a variety of pencils for regular drawing, but I prefer the mechanical ones for when I do transfers. All right. Again, with the transfers, after I've done so, I usually use um, burnt sienna acrylic paint. This is from the Liquidex Basics. You know, pretty standard. Most people probably recognize 
this brand and this variety. Burnt Sienna comes up, you know, not too dark and everything. And what I do is I paint over uh, the trace I did on the graphite trans transfer using this little palette to hold my paint and everything. And I will go over that with the paint so it doesn't smear when I work. So by doing this, I basically incorporate the original image onto the board so it won't smear or wipe off by accident. And then I proceed to paint over that. We will go over more of this in the next video. And of course, your paints. Now I brought down a few varieties here to look at. I and these are basically water mixable oil paints or water soluble. Basically means this variety doesn't require turpentine. It's water soluble and e much easier to clean and also doesn't smell as bad, to be honest. Mm. These are the types I use. I tend to use Winsor Newton a lot f for my brand, mostly because that's what I started off with when I was learning how to paint several, several years ago back in college. But you can use other uh, brands of water mixable oils. It doesn't particularly matter. Although Winsor Newton did kind of start off the whole water soluble craze with the oils. But there are other ones out here like this one I particularly like now is this Duo Aqua, Aqua Oil. And it comes out in more creamier consistency with the paint where it can be a bit more varied with the Winsor Newton. Again, you should try out multiple brands depending on price range, what colors you want, and consistency that you know, work, works well for you. Go ahead and try them out. There's no issue with them. Usually you only need a few basic colors, but just pick out whichever ones you want. Now to go with the oil paints, you'll need um, linseed oil. The brand of the variety does not particularly matter. This is what you use to help thin out your oil paint, like if, as if you were adding water to a acrylic to help loosen it up and make it flow more thinly. This is the same kind of concept here. This is, you don't have to use water for it, you said use linseed oil. And it is very, very smooth and uh, make sure if you do get some on your hands that you wash off with soap and water because it, it's got that greasy, oily consistency, of course. Now, do be aware that if you're glazing with your paints with a lot of linseed oil, uh, be aware that it can leave a glossy shine when it's done. And if you're okay with that effect, that's fine. Just be wary of it because sometimes that can be a little distracting in the finished product. And the finished look can vary with you know, a strong uh, paint application. Again, experiment and see what kind of happens because the finish with these can vary, although for the most part the same effect with any type. Now to uh, clean your brushes, you can use rag, cloth, towel, kind of varies whichever works for you. These that I have here are basically cut off bits of old white t-shirts of, of all things, but I find they work very well and you know, they do the good job for me. Now, what you use these obviously for is to clean your brushes. In particular, if you've been painting a while and your brush has a lot of paint on it, don't put it directly into the water to clean off. Wipe off the excess first and then clean in the water and dry off again on the cleaner portion of the cloth in order to do so. And in case you haven't noticed, since oil paints tend to dry slower, you'll get a lot of globs everywhere. So try not to handle it a lot. Try and stay in a more cleaner corner for a while and after several days or a week or so you could switch to another section. Because if I touch just like this, I'm probably gonna get paint on my hands. So do be wary of that if you wanna keep your hands clean. All right, and here is the uh, jar of water I use for cleaning my brushes. I like ones with lids so that way I can carry it to and from without worrying about spilling by accident. Mine's a glass one, although you can use pretty much any kind of container or jar that you want to clean your brushes with. Now it's okay since you've gotten the excess off and are just getting like the residual off your brush and everything. It's okay to put this down the sink when you're done. And do and I usually empty this after each painting session. Although if I've been painting for a long time and it's like really dirty, I'll, I'll, I'll switch it out and change out the water and this is okay to put down the sink. 
And of course, where you would put that paint is a palette. This is the one I use. This is what you would obviously do to add and mix your paint. An example of how you can mix your paint is with a palette knife like this. You don't have to use one. I don't use them too often because I tend to work in smaller quantities of paint, which is fine. I can just use my brush to mix and others can too, but if you're working in larger quantities and you're trying to get a particular color all nice and smooth, this is very good for mixing it up and getting that color. Just make sure you wipe it off when you're done. Go ahead and put that. And it's, you, you know, palettes can come in many varieties from acrylic and plastic, masonite, which is this material, and other materials. Now I like this one because it's harder to chip, crack, or break. And again, each use what you like. It's also a matter of personal preference. Like some people prefer like the acrylic or plastic because it's kind of easier to wipe off and it has a smoother surface. This does have a bit of tooth to it. And after each painting session, I would take a like paper towel and wipe off the excess paint from here and throw that into the trash. Word of warning, do not put that paint in the sink. Do not clean off oil paint from your palette into the sink, it could clog your drain. The paint could build up and it would just clog it and you do not want to have to call a plumber for this. No, wipe it off with paper towel or something else disposable and throw it away into a trash can. Back in college, we had a large plastic drum where you could scrape and dispose of the paint and then wipe off the rest with paper towel. Do not use cloth or rags or anything paint laden into the laundry. You'll kind of get a similar situation. You don't want the paint to be mixed up and gain all over your washer and dryer. And after I wipe the excess paint off, I just clean it up with a bit of damp paper towels and dry it off and it's ready to use again. Notice how nice and clean it is, even though I've had this for oh, almost 10 years now. I look in the condition it's in. And I prefer this type of method of doing it rather than leaving the paint to dry and make little globs everywhere. Because when it does that, I find I don't like having that uneven surface to work with. And especially if there's not dry paint still on there, then it might contaminate paints I'm trying to mix and I don't want that. So basically I like to work on a clean surface every time and smooth so that way I'm not worried about bumps and everything and being uneven. I'm a little finicky that way, but that's my personal preference there. Now there is a way you can save used oil paint if you don't want to get rid of it yet. One of the ways I was taught how to do was take some parchment paper Apply it to like say a lip tray or even just you know a regular baking tray or something. I prefer using an old one so you don't have to worry about contaminating it. Put a little tape on it to secure it. Apply your paint, use as needed, and you know when it's when you're done for the day but you don't want to toss it, you could stick this in the fridge and the cool air will slow the drying process for about one to three days extra depending on conditions and everything and how long it had been out already and then you can continue using it. The advantage to a lip tray, basically it's got an edge to it, is that you could put like a flat top on it and cover it to keep things out of it. So that way, if you put this in your fridge, less likely to get paint in your fridge or on your food. So do bear that in mind. This is very optional. I don't usually use it, but it's handy to have if like say my palette wasn't here or something or if I wanted to work with the same paint for a while. So that's a handy method of using it. And now an apron. Seems kind of innocuous, but I like to have an apron for the most part to cover my shirt when I'm painting to help reduce getting paint on myself. I'm just kind of more of a stickler for cleanliness and everything. Basically, I'm not the type of artist who has paint smears all over her. I prefer a clean workstation to prevent getting paint on furniture or contaminating my colors when I'm trying to mix and everything because I accidentally introduced another one to it. And I'll wash my hands if I do find paint on them just so that I don't risk getting it on you know, the painting or somewhere it really shouldn't be. It also helps uh, prevent accidentally mixing uh, other colors with it. Because remember when you're working with you know, actual paint and everything, doing it hand done, there's no control Z to correct your mistakes if you messed up. You then have to wait for the dry and then paint over it again and fix it that way, which takes a long time. 
And that's a rundown of the supplies I used and what they're used for. For the next video I make, I intend to go over the graphite transfer and paint sketch process, what I use when I start a new painting. Again, I'm Veronica of Paint My Moment. Please remember to like, follow, or subscribe to our Instagram, Facebook, or YouTube page. Or you can support us through Patreon. Remember, Patreon is a voluntary subscription site where you can give a monetary contribution to your favorite creators. And you can even earn perks and benefits based on those contributions. Until next time, bye!